recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Saturday, 6th July 1895. Today we had Shankaracharya's commentary on Vyasa's Vedanta Sutras, Om Tat Sat. According to Shankara, there are two phases of the universe, one is I and the other Thou, and they are as contrary as light and darkness, so it goes without saying that neither can be derived from the other. On the subject, the object has been superimposed, the subject is the only reality, the other a mere appearance. The opposite view is untenable. Matter and the external world are but the soul in a certain state, in reality there is only one. All our world comes from truth and untruth coupled together. Samsara, life, is the result of the contradictory forces acting upon us, like the diagonal motion of a ball in a parallelogram of forces. The world is God and is real, but that is not the world we see, just as we see silver in the mother of pearl where it is not. This is what is known as adhyasa or superimposition, that is, a relative existence dependent upon a real one, as when we recall a scene we have seen, for the time it exists for us, but that existence is not real. Or some say, it is as when we imagine heat in water, which does not belong to it, so really it is something which has been put where it does not belong, taking the thing for what it is not. We see reality, but distorted by the medium through which we see it. You can never know yourself except as objectified. When we mistake one thing for another, we always take the thing before us as the real, never the unseen, thus we mistake the object for the subject. The Atman never becomes the object. Mind is the internal sense, the outer senses are its instruments. In the subject is a trifle of the objectifying power that enables him to know I am, but the subject is the object of its own self, never of the mind or the senses. You can, however, superimpose one idea on another idea, as when we say, the sky is blue, the sky itself being only an idea. Science and nescience there are, but the self is never affected by any nescience. Relative knowledge is good because it leads to absolute knowledge, but neither the knowledge of the senses, nor of the mind, nor even of the Vedas is true, since they are all within the realm of relative knowledge. First get rid of the delusion, I am the body, then only can we want real knowledge. Man's knowledge is only a higher degree of brute knowledge. One part of the Vedas deals with karma, form and ceremonies. The other part deals with the knowledge of Brahman and discusses religion. The Vedas in this part teach of the self, and because they do, their knowledge is approaching real knowledge. Knowledge of the Absolute depends upon no book, nor upon anything, it is absolute in itself. No amount of study will give this knowledge, is not theory, it is realization. Cleanse the dust from the mirror, Purify your own mind, and in a flash you know that you are Brahman. God exists, not birth nor death, not pain nor misery, nor murder, nor change, nor good nor evil, all is Brahman. We take the rope for the serpent, the error is ours. We can only do good when we love God, and He reflects our love. The murderer is God, and the clothing of murderer, is only superimposed upon him. Take him by the hand and tell him the truth. Soul has no caste, and to think it has is a delusion, so are life and death, or any motion or quality. The Atman never changes, never goes nor comes. It is the eternal witness of all its own manifestations, but we take it for the manifestation, an eternal illusion, without beginning or end, ever going on. The Vedas, however, have to come down to our level, for if they told us the highest truth in the highest way, we could not understand it. Heaven is a mere superstition arising from desire, and desire is ever a yoke, a degeneration. Never approach anything except as God, 
for if we do, we see evil, because we throw a veil of delusion over what we look at, and then we see evil. Get free from these illusions, be blessed. Freedom is to lose all illusions. In one sense Brahman is known to every human being, he knows, I am, but man does not know himself as he is. We all know we are, but not how we are. All lower explanations are partial truths, but the flower, the essence of the Vedas, is that the self in each of us is Brahman. Every phenomenon is included in birth, growth, and death, appearance, continuance and disappearance. Our own realization is beyond the Vedas, because even they depend upon that. The highest Vedanta is the philosophy of the beyond. To say that creation has any beginning is to lay the axe at the root of all philosophy. Maya is the energy of the universe, potential and kinetic. Until Mother releases us, we cannot get free. The universe is ours to enjoy. But want nothing. To want is weakness. Want makes us beggars, and we are sons of the king, not beggars.